Tony Khan has said AEW is for the sickles and that might be the most credible thing that he's ever said because you must be absolutely sick in the head to enjoy this crap. Welcome back guys to Fog Wrestling. We must be sick in the head as well. Saturday night, 3 a.m. Just finished watching AEW Collision and now our heads are about to be on a collision course with the pillows. But first, we got to talk about this shit. Damn right, we have to talk about it. It's going to be like a collision course in the Benoit household in that weekend in 2007 with pillows. But uh, yeah, put your pillows to one side and talk about AEW Collision, where we kicked off with the match that I thought probably should have been the main event, Combat Club against FTR. Two boring tag teams, a match that I didn't want to see in the main event, a match that I didn't want to see open up the show, just a match that I did not want to see, and we got to see it, we got to see it for 20 minutes, a time limit draw, I mean, did we really need that, did we really need 20 minutes here of back and forth action, that is what we got, FTR, Blackpool Combat Club, nothing could separate them, it goes to a draw, Claudio has a submission in, referee says the time's expired, Claudio and Wheeler Yuta start celebrating like a bunch of retards, even though they knew that there was no tap out, Claudio knew there was no tap, Claudio knew there was no giving up, he's right there, his head is literally fucking right beside um, Cash Wheeler, he knows that he didn't win this match, but he gets up and celebrates like a turd anyway, you know, it just made no sense to me. I think it was different with Bret Hart in the original Iron Man match because you'd never seen an Iron Man match before. Bret didn't exactly know how this would end. Claudio knew that this time limit was coming up. Plus, the sharpshooter, you're not even looking at your opponent and, and you're facing away from them. So, Shawn Michaels could have easily tapped. Bret wouldn't know. But Claudio knew here that he didn't win. But he celebrated like a spastic anyway. And then Braxton Cutler came out. He says this match isn't going another five minutes because the contract reads 20. They beat him up and then that's it. Claudio goes, I'm not going to shake your hand, Ring of Honor. That would be generic. But uh, if you want to do it again, I'll give you, we can run it back. And that is it. That was your match, that was your whack, that was your opener. That's what you got right there. And uh, wrestling... 441mania.com This is what they said about this match. They said, quote, Three and three quarter stars. Hell yes. This is exactly what we wanted from our Saturday night. They straight up cooked for 20 minutes. <laughs> End of quote. I mean, really? This is what you want on a Saturday night? On a Saturday night, the thing that gets you fighting, the thing that gets you pumped is... Cash Wheeler, Dax Harwood, Claudio, and Wheeler Yuta going to a boring 20 minute time limit draw. Is that really what it's boiling down to? Is that as good as a Saturday night gets? Man, the world is fucked. Yep, yeah, the world is fucked. And I think the biggest problem with this is for me, you knew the match was going to be alright, but who cares? See, having the first two quarters of your show being based around these four having a match. It is setting up to fail. No one cares about long. See, ma matches should only be long if they actually warrant it via story or it's like a pay per view slash title match. This is a throwaway tag match, man. Well, I start, you know, f f that's all you get. First half an hour, two entrances and a 20 minute time limit match with Brian Cutler coming out and saying aye. <laughs> well, you're not going any longer. We're really trying to hype up the fact, right? About oh the, the collisions a tag team wrestling show and the, the, the we've put tag team wrestling back on the map. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. Nowhere near. I mean, they actually it actually pisses me off that FTR think they're they're the dogs bollocks of the best tag team going. They're shite. Look at the physiques on them, man. Fucking dis and they're all wearing the same black tights attire. And cat um, body wheel or you. I bet my life that he would actually get pinned tonight. Looks like I'm gonna die. I'm just glad Brandon Cutler came out because he saved us for another five minutes. He did. But again, no, he saved us for another five minutes, but then because he did come out, we actually had to suffer Claudio Castanogli on the fucking mic. Yeah, you want to dance one more time, amigos? Let's go. Me Serbian. I mean, uh, where, where's he from? Switzerland? Switzerland. Swiss he, he's as blunt as a Swiss army fucking baguette. 
That's what he is. He's absolute mince. That didn't even make any sense. But you know what? I think you mean bland. Yeah, bland. But you know what? There's no, there's no sense for this to go half an hour, man. No good wrestling show kicks off with a throwaway tag match that takes up a quarter of the show. That, no, that's no. See, see, the two man power trip taking on Ben Wan Jericho. That fucking warrants half an hour. It does. This warrants hee haw. I know, but that's something you do at the end of the show. I think you can end a show on a twenty minute time limit draw. Uh, it doesn't quite work opening. No. You want fast paced action. See, open the show. You want to get through the first segment and on to the next thing. Fuck me, you tune into this. Half an hour in, you're, you're just wanting to go to bed. That's it. But here, Smackdown. I passed it about five times tonight. Not once. Tony Khan's doing something right. Also, Claudio, when he went on the mic, he said he won't shake their hands because that's too cliche. Isn't what they just done cliche in AEW? have a, a long opening 20 minute tag team match plus I'm pretty sure a lot of matches in AEW too many matches for my liking go to 20 minute time limit draws yeah in WWE when, when do you ever get a draw? you don't I can't remember the last draw in WWE I don't even think they have time limits there shouldn't even be a time limit man unless it's an Iron Man match then that's it especially in AEW though because they run over anyway you feel like... <laughs> yeah, but he's talking about cliché. Let's not pretend like this is the first match to go 20 minutes. This has happened quite a lot in AEW. No, but it's even like... That, that's the extent of his character. He's got none anyway, but it's like... Here, I'm all about wrestling, but... I'm, I'm not going to shake your hand because that's cliché. That, that's like them trying to give him a bit of depth. He's a boring bastard. Isn't it him fucking doing the, the Cesaro spin cliche because he does it every single fucking match? I did it here, the branding. I agree. Isn't everybody coming out in the on the AEW roster with zero build cliche? Absolutely. Isn't AEW putting on a shite show every single week cliche? Ring of Honor. Anyway, backstage, Lexi nails with Kyle O'Reilly. Kyle gets why Orange is the MVP of AEW. Roderick Strong comes. Strong says he's looked good since his return, but not great. One step forward, two steps back. It's something is missing for him. Strong says he'll be rooting for him in the main event. Strong is beating Orange twice, so if he needs advice, he's your man. Strong says what Kyle told him when he came back. So, so you calling Orange Cassidy the MVP? That is disgraceful to everyone in the company. It actually is worth a damn, by the way. This guy could drop dead or just vanish through the earth, and, and we wouldn't notice. Also, I mean, this main event did kind of become... This, kind, this main event came on about half an hour to go. I've got a feeling the ratings are going to tank. I think the final quarter could be next level shit this week, but we'll see. No, you like, I think the best part of this show is the middle hour. Because they crammed a lot in. Either side of it, it was just fucking two long matches I didn't care for. Pretty much. First half an hour was the, the opening tag team match. And then the second half an hour, uh, the last half an hour was the boring main event with the running with a bunch of jobbers that nobody cares about, so... Yeah, um, Stokely Hathaway comes out, he says, get on your feet for Saturday night. So it's Saturday night. How can she be Saturday night when it's her first, it's her debut on Collision? <laughs> Big Stokely. But surely to be Saturday night, you would think Chris Statlander would be a mainstay on Saturdays and she'd be holding down the fort on Saturday night. It's her first match on Collision. Anyway, she beats Robin Renegade, not really surprised. I seen a tweet from Audrey Edwards saying that uh, Robin Renegade was licking ass tonight. Now I don't know if she meant kicking because the K is right beside the L and it could be a typo. But I don't see how Robin Renegade kicked any ass because she got beaten like 1 minute and 35 seconds. And I don't recall any offensive manoeuvres in there. So must have been licking then? Although maybe Audrey Edwards was, uh, maybe that was a dig but I can't imagine Audrey Edwards taking a dig at AEW. I mean they sign her paychecks. They keep her they keep her in the door. They keep her employed. She's a fucking weirdo. Halfway gets on the mic, says that Statlander's an inspiration and she's going to be the first woman to win the Women's World Championship and the TBS Championship. How? Because she is the first entrant into the 2000 Owen Hart, 2024 Owen Hart Foundation Cup. She will go into Wembley and she will hold that championship up high. No one can stop her. I'm confused. I don't know which title the winner of the Owen Hart Cup gets. Is it the TBS Championship or the World Championship? It's the World Championship, both of them. Both of them? Uh, the men's gets a shot as well. And the women's. 
Tony Khan announced that so beside wait, is Owen it, Hart's widow. It's the TBS champion. Nah, but there's two. There's two different titles. Which shot does? What does the winner get? The winner gets a world title shot. Fuck that! He says she's going to become the first woman to win the TBS championship and the women's world championship. Yeah, because she's already won the TBS championship. I don't recall it. When was it? Well, she did. I know that for a fact. Well, what a fucking unforgettable reign that was. That... Or forgettable reign. They're all forgettable reigns. Fucking, but here, at least I know my stuff. I'm not proud to know my stuff, but here. I don't know, you know one thing about AW, like, I mean... I know another thing. What? It's shite. <laughs> right. Well, I don't recall her having the title reign. Must have been short. Must have been very, very short. Uh, back for the commercial. Lexi Nairs with Will Nightingale. She's like, what are you doing here? She says, well, I'm entering the Owen Cup too. I mean, Owen Hart is being represented here by a bunch of fucks that probably good chance weren't even born when he died. And if they were, then they, they were infants. His name's getting dragged through the mud here. Why are these people representing Owen Hart? Why are these people in the Owen Hart Cup? It just doesn't really make any sense to me. At least with Andre the Giant, it's always... Actually, actually, I'm going to fucking take it back. I was about to say it's showcased at Mania. It's actually showcased on the shittiest Smackdown. <laughs> of all time. Yeah, no, every year. The, ro the Smackdown before Mania every year now is like the worst. Because for some reason, the main offenders are fucking no there. I just don't do anything. It's basically fucking repeats and highlights. And it's basically the matches that would have made on the pre-show. <laughs> um, I mean, if you got that, like, 15 years ago, it would have been good matches, but... Aye, I mean, not, not anymore. Uh, match three, the natural Dustin Rhodes versus Johnny TV. Johnny TV can't beat the natural Dustin Rhodes. It's time to give up, I think. I thought this match was alright. I thought Ty Falkyrie was just being annoying, but, I mean, that's the gimmick, I guess, but... It's like, it, it, I don't know, it's just getting in Dustin Rhodes' face and just being like, very feminist, wasn't it? Like, oh, you can't touch me, I'm a woman sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, that's... The, I, I honestly don't get it. I, I really don't get the women, the male-female interaction in wrestling to us at 24. It, I think it's downright hideous to watch. The fact that these women just know that they're untouchable. I... Yeah, no, nah, I, I find it fucking awful. You know what? The only way this could ever work is if they kept doing this shit and in one time there was this absolute bastard of a heel woman and, and she just got fucking killed by a, a, a face man who had enough with a fucking chair shot to the dome or something. But yeah, then, but would that not then just automatically turn the guy heel? Well, it probably would, like, but... Uh, yeah, no, you're right, though. It's pathetic. Like, you actually get the sense that in, in today's... WWE slash AEW wrestling bubble like the woman could commit murder kill the entire guy's family and he'd just have to sit there and take it well uh, uh, pretty much I mean what else can he do? Nada I mean Liv Morgan's coming on to Dominic Mysterio and he can't even push her off or defend himself he needs to pray that non-deadbeat dad Finn Balor's gonna come out and make the save the line starts behind me fella apart from this one because I'm gay Hey, right, anyway, um, Johnny TV, what's the point? Just just go back to TNA, man. Lucha Underground, something. Lucha Underground could do something. Go back to fucking boxing. Yeah, he's pretty good at that. Mm. Dustin Rhodes then grabs the mic and he says that he's old. Fucking tell us something we don't know. I've been wrestling for six decades. He wants to talk about scapegoat Jack Perry. Then he proceeded to cut a American Dream-like promo. Some of a promo. Some of a promo. Hard times, let me tell you. I bought some hard times. Yo, he talks about Jack Perry being born with a silver spoon. I'm sorry, Dustin, so were you and Cody. Your dad may have had it rough, but what, once once he's made it as the American dream, and yeah. you're his children, you've benefited from that. You wouldn't... Dustin, saying, Dustin and Cody were automatically going to get into wrestling. They were going to find some form of employment just due to the fact who their father was. No, but see these people that spin the Silver Spoon story because maybe Jack Perry's dad was a bit richer than Dusty Rose. It doesn't work like that, I'm sorry. You're either rich or you're poor. A and bit richer? And they're fucking rich. I don't know how much money the guy's got. No, but you're either rich or you're poor. Does it really matter if you're super rich or rich? Aye, I, mean, I, I agree. I, I don't think Dustin Rhodes can claim that he had to... He's told, oh, you get sacked, then you pick up two jobs, and you're you're making less money than before. Dustin I mean. Rhodes got his so long, so much longevity because Dusty Rhodes is his father. That's how he broke into the business so early. See if Dustin Rhodes wasn't the son of 
Dusty then, w would he be where he is today? See if cookie cutter, bland Cody Rhodes wasn't the son of the American Dream Dusty Rhodes, would he be this top guy in WWE right now? No, absolutely not, because it's half their gimmick. That's all, that's only, my dad, my dad, the American Dream. I'm not going to bury gold dust too much, because that character didn't really feature Dusty. But see if you actually, or like Black Rain, but see if you look at Cody, Cody Rhodes pretty much from his debut. And then, like, even gold. Well, he did literally debut right by Dusty Rhodes' side. Yeah, but I'm talking about from his debut right to right now. He can't go five seconds without mentioning or talking about him or referencing him. I actually think Cody Rhodes' best spell is probably his uh, dashing stuff. And that that's was, when he mentioned in the least. That's when he didn't mention anything to do with Dusty. And anyway, look, I mean, it wasn't a bad promo from Dustin Rhodes, but I just I wasn't really feeling it, man. He, he kept swearing about. Uh, Perry and he kept getting cut off and he's on about <laughs> how dare you put your hands on Tony Khan he pays our paychecks and that's fucking true like could you imagine if a wrestler actually botched and, and killed Tony Khan it's, imagine the amount of heat he would have all those fucking losers all those bums in AEW that know their meal ticket is gone no if Tony Khan died tomorrow this company would be over by Monday no, but look at half the guys in this roster that would be nowhere. Half the guys in this roster, right, are making good money. And if AEW didn't exist, they would be on the indie scene working for like 25 bucks a night. Yo, I don't wish death on Tony Khan, but I would be intrigued to see what actually would happen if he died in an alternative <laughs> universe. Well, ha half of these guys would be at McDonald's. No, they would be. And uh, so would Will Nightingale, but for oh. different reasons. <laughs> I'm not here but as an employee. I'm here as a customer. But no, you're right. This promo, it's like it's like six weeks out of date. The, the, the elite stuff with Tony Khan happened like over a month ago. <laughs> yeah, it, just it makes no fuck. Is no, it? It, no. But this this is like Booker T, right? Flinging Austin through the announce table at King of the Ring 2001. Then six weeks later, you've got like some mid carder, like fucking who, who, who are we gonna go with? Uh, Hardcore Holly comes out, comes out. Hardcore Holly comes out, he comes out to the middle of the ring and he's like, Hey, Booker T, you threw our locker room leader through the table six weeks ago. Yeah, the, the, you the, son of a bitch. The, the fact that Dustin Rhodes is bringing this up like two months later, it just shows you that he wasn't really that bored. Yeah. If he was really upset about it, he, he would have called out Jack Perry the very next week. Yo, they have three, they have three shows a week, right? And, so, and that is like, he said 24 shows. To fucking respond to this. Right. Up next, we had the premier athletes, Tony Nese and Aria Davari taking on Trip Jordan and some other guy. Um, 441mania.com has said the following about this match. This is our description. Davari and Nice jump the jobbers as they're being introduced. Nice with the sit-out driver on Jordy for the 1-2-3. We have jobbers jumping jobbers here. How the fuck can you be in a tag team match against Tony Nese and Aria Defari and you're getting described as the jobbers? That must be the biggest insult ever made in the history of the fucking planet. Trip Jordy and question mark. Imagine being in a imagine being against Tony Nese and Aria Defari, but you're being described as jobbers. No, that's bad. That's that's extremely poor. I mean, the fact they don't even know the guy's name just sums it up. But you're right. No, Tony Nice and this Davari guy are exhibit A of ex WWE guys getting signed. I mean, this is like the Brooklyn Brawler being against somebody and they refer to that guy as a job. You're like, what the fuck? Oh, we got a, we got a commercial. Sack Saber Junior, very annoying voice. He's going to be at the naughty door, aka Forbidden Door. He says he's going to squeeze Orange Cassidy's bollocks. Oh, I mean, nah, well, don't worry. Kyle O'Reilly squeezed him later on the night. I mean, come on, what the fuck are we doing here? I'm going to squeeze Orange Cassidy's bollocks tonight. <laughs> Forbidden door, the naughty door. Oh yes, freshly. He squeezed. wants to enter through the fucking naughty door. The back door, the brown door. We got a Scorpio Sky backstage video package. He says all of the AEW heroes have fallen. Sky says now is the time to come together. They can reach the stars. He will be your hero, your voice, and eventually your champion. 
He's here for you. That's pathetic. I mean, this guy will be forgotten about in a month. Like, th this isn't the start of some, you know, great Scorpio Sky run. I wouldn't be surprised if the guy is released by the end of July. What do you mean he'll be forgotten about in a month, man? I forgot about him fucking... As soon as I sent it, we thought you thought it was too cold, Scorpio. Yeah, I knew who it was. I just couldn't remember his name. Fucking too cold, stone cold, freezing. <laughs> I know it was something Scorpio. Anyway, do you think this guy's going to be on and become a world champion? No. He says all the heroes have fallen. Would you agree with that? Fuck! I mean, they're kind of playing up the whole takeover of the elite, but no. I mean, couldn't the elite be described as heroes? Could be, but this guy's definitely not a hero. I need a hero at the end of the night. Anyway, match five, Timeless Tony Storm with Mariah May and Luther versus Lady Frost. Um, thoughts on this? Lady Frost, I think, taking Tony Storm way too long in this match. She um, did, and I thought Tony Storm actually broke her neck. It didn't look good, the pile driver, but turns out they're all right. So that's, well, that's good. good. That's good to see. Um, it was seven minutes and 45 seconds now. <sighs> compared to the other and com compared to long matches it's not long but I think that is too long for a champion against someone who is essentially a jobber yeah. who's Lady Frost I think this should have been like a two minute match no, I agree for whatever reason it wasn't it makes no sense after the match no, like, no if Chris Statlander beats uh, Renegade earlier in a minute and a half I know Renegade more than I know La Lady Frost. Yeah, so why, why is this flipped? No idea. After the match, Timeless Tony Storm talks to Mariah May on the apron. It's fucking weird. Oh, honey, I'm going to put you in Owen Hart's Foundation Tournament, sweetie. <laughs> uh, she talks about facing her best friend, Mina Sharaka, and Storm says that she loves me and she's proud of her and that she's going to protect her. She's going to... She's going to protect her. She's going to put her in the Owen Hart competition. She's going to win it. And one day, Mariah May will be just like Tony Storm. And she says, chins up, tits up. Chins up? Who are you talking about here? Do drop? Well, chin up. Girl. Chin up, tits out, watch for the shoe. Um, that was that, really. They walked off to the back. Um, yeah. Any thoughts on it? I think, I think Tony Storm cuts a good promo. No, she does. You know what? No, it's a fucking horrendous state of affairs when I say Tony Storm is probably the best person right now, consistently at cutting promos. I like Ellie Knight and Carmelo Hayes. Oh, across the board? No, I, I would. No, that's a fair. I think that's fair. I, right? I like Ellie Knight and Carmelo Hayes, but it feels so disjointed. It doesn't feel like... I feel like Tony Storm's actually been consistently in, like, actual stories for, like, a good six months. You know what I don't get though, right? I mean, I know we've got a lot of WWE guy fans on this channel that like to bash AW and, you know, we love to bash AW as well, but some people will just straight up lie. I mean, Tony Storm's been doing a great job as the women's champion, yet people would say, oh no, Nia Jax is better than her. Why are people fucking pretending that Nia Jax is doing this amazing work right now just because Triple H is in charge? I've never seen anybody before praise Nia Jax or credit Nia Jax but it's like anything Triple H does people just like mark it as if it's the greatest thing ever see right now I'd probably rate Tony Storm about a 7 out of 10 see Bailey, I'd give a fucking 0 Tony Storm's uh, the minus 7 Tony Storm's the best female ha in, in wrestling hands down yep. right now no I don't think anyone comes close no so right, any, any, anything to add no, I mean, I like I, I like the dynamic as well. I, I like um, I like Luther and uh, I like Mariah May. Yeah, you, know, you can't disagree with it. No one, you know, forget about A. W. And I like the filters as well. I, I like the, the the black and white. Might be something little, but it, it makes her stand out. No, I say what you want though. She's she's a better. She's just a better actor than half the women that we see. I mean, I don't. I think Liv Morgan can't really act. I think Tony Storm is a fucking. I was going to say fantastic actor, but in terms of the wrestling female bubble, she is fucking ha levels above the rest. Ah, no, definitely, definitely, definitely the uh, the best woman right now in wrestling. No, no, it not, is. not she, even close. She delivers in every promo. I feel like when you watch like women's wrestling, it, like Liv Morgan can deliver one good one, and then the next week it can just be back to shite. I feel like Tony Storm hits the ball at the park every game. 
I say, to be honest, I don't actually think Liv Morgan's really cutting good promos. I, I just think that they've, they've, they've sexualised her a wee bit and they've, they've got this interesting no, dynamic I'm not saying dominant. she's cutting good promos, but I'm saying when she does cut something half decent, it's back to being shite the next week. I think if you took Liv Morgan, I think if you gave Alexa Bliss a spot to Liv Morgan, she'd be doing hell a lot better right now than... Where is better. Alexa Bliss? I don't know. Or even Tiffany Stratton. Why not? Who I think is a lot better than Liv Morgan. I don't know, I just don't think Liv Morgan's a good promo. Would, Lud- would Ludwig Kaiser be like, Oh, but, but I get to go home. Ah. <sighs> Maybe. Uh, right. Hey, Seamus, I don't want to go home with her, you know. I want to go home with you, little Irish man. Yeah, um, so we get that. I like the, I like Luther. He doesn't really do much. He kind of just like stands there and holds the belt, but. I actually don't like Luther. I, I, I you mean, don't? Well, it's not that I don't like it. He doesn't do nothing for me. He just kind of, I don't know. He, he doesn't need to be there. To me, you could just sack him and it would save money. Anyway. Oh, hold on. If we're going to sack people that sit outside at ringside in AW, he's not the first one to go. See that prick that comes out with Phoenix? Get him at the fucking door. I don't know that, his name. That guy's 46 and he jumps around like a cheerleader. Stupid fuck. Anyway, let's move on. Who's half this roster, mate? I know, but... Or did he, man? What's his name? Steven, Steven something? Or is it Adam? Simon? Hi, something like that. So, he's like Mexican-ish, but not... I don't know. Anyway, who cares? I was going to call him something else there, but we're not bored. Um, Lexi Nair speaking to Dante Mar- I mean, it's a, it's a who's who of jobbers here, right? Again, just jobbers throughout this show. You've got Dante Martin, Lee Moriarty, and another four guys backstage. Now, apparently, they agreed not to get physical here. As if that means anything, right? See if it's like Triple H... Versus uh, Stone Cold, and you've got the history, and they're agreeing to meet in the ring, and they can't get physical. That that means something. See these two guys not getting physical. That means nothing. These two guys there was three of them. There were six of them, but well, that's what I mean, three on each side. But you asked me who were any of them were. <laughs> I looked at the left side. I quickly looked to the right, and I gave up. I was defeated. I had no idea who any of them were. No, you couldn't name anybody. You couldn't name nothing. So. Is what it is. Uh, we then get Samoa Joe and Hook backstage. They've got a camera. Now, I'm not sure who's following them, but we've got like this AI voice. This was just cringe. I man. thought they were talking to Lexi Nair, but it was like an AI version. Very strange. When they're talking about. Arguing about which sport is like the longest in America. Oh, what is it, the oldest? And then they go into a locker room and they attack another bunch of guys. I have no idea who they are. I mean, who are the, who were the two guys they attacked? I don't know, but then Joe's like, get on your knees, I did this to you, and then, and then he just leaves, it's like, wow. Right, one minute we've got Joe and, and Hook going against the learning tree, Joe's just lost his world title, I say just lost, right, he didn't really show up for a long time, he's lost his world title, and he's not bothered about getting it back, Joe's only caring about arguing about whatever sport is the oldest in America lacrosse and attacking two random dudes backstage what is the direction of Samoa Joe? Cater <sighs> be lying for Cater well you better get there quickly or Will and Nightingale will fucking hate it all. Uh, match 6 Daniel Garcia versus Tate Mayfairs right, Garcia wins move on I have fucking nothing to say about this match see Garcia it's like the, the, this guy has got zero personality zero charisma and they think that they can give him this gay dance where he like thrusts his hips and that's going to get him over. This guy is never going to get over. I remember they were arguing, oh, Daniel Garcia, is he a professional wrestler or is he a sports entertainer? He's nothing. Well, he may as well pick professional wrestler because he'll never be a sports entertainer. There's nothing entertaining about him. No, there's not. Anyway, remember a couple weeks ago he was like fucking thrusting his pelvis into Shabata's no, head look how generic the guy is man there's fucking nothing up there's not an ounce of creativity about him I mean say what you want about Lance Storm right he was a boring bastard but he made certain things work this guy will never make anything work yeah but Lance Storm was actually a great wrestler no he was and I actually think I actually think Lance Storm was a bit funny how fucking boring he was and, and he, he ripped the piss at himself if I can be serious for a minute. You know, that was his gimmick. His gimmick was he was boring. Yeah. See, Daniel Garcia, he's not supposed to be boring. 
He's supposed to be this party animal. Oh, look at me. He's charismatic. He dances. He entertains. He thrusts his hips. Ho ho, it's Danny Garcia. Then he's talking about, these are my people. This is for the sickles. And it's like Tony Khan. It's just, it's just like when Tony Khan sent out Adam Copeland to spew all the bullshit. It's the same thing done here. No, it's pathetic, this sickles shit. Well, no, what, what, what is that? We're sickles. What, the, we're the weirdos that enjoy this shit. <sighs> I don't know, man. I, I, no, but how, no, but that's like Tony Khan saying, oh, we've got our own wee diehard fan base that watches this shit. See what, I mean, come on, man. See when the ratings were flying in back in the day, it was like, man, like, oh, we're, we're our own wee group of sickles. This is brilliant. The ratings are in. It's fucking garbage. Maybe the sickle. I mean, even ECW, like, it's like, they had a hardcore base, but I wouldn't say it's sickles. Anyway, don't know who may fails this, but screw him. No, but at least at least in ECW, it felt it felt cult like the degree. It was like extreme fucking hardcore shit, man. Then all this AEW flippy dippy gymnast pathetic gay shit. Yeah, I don't think the ECW crowd they didn't. I, I wouldn't look at them and go fuck these guys are losers. They yeah. didn't strike me as losers. Yeah, I, I would never describe like cool people as sickles. Oh, that's sick. Fuck off, Tony. I think ACW is more of a hardcore base, like a cult, like you said. Yeah, I wonder if Tony Khan's father believes in all this, you know, flippy dippy, sickle gay pride stuff that Tony Khan believes in. He probably just wants to flip all Tony Khan's money back in his own bank account. He's probably thinking, do you think? Do you think Shadik Khan actually thinks how much money is my son wasted on this shit? No, do you think he ever actually sits down and thinks of that? <laughs> yeah. If he sits down and thinks about it, he'll never get it his fuck. He'll never get it his head. Anyway, uh, next week is is the one year anniversary of Collision, and they announce a, a bunch of jobber matches for the one year. Like, how the hell did we have Lee Moriarty versus Dante Martin on the one? You'd think the one year anniversary they would actually put some good shit on it. Yeah. Now I, mean, I know they can't really get CM Punk back, but I mean, come on, they could do more than Lee Moriarty versus Dante Martin. No, they absolutely could do more than that for whatever reason. They haven't done more. I mean, they're, they're trying to pass these guys off as fucking... Main, not main offenders, but people that can actually, like, draw people in for the anniversary show. Come on. Orange Cassidy says all his friends are gone. For two years, everybody wanted to team with him, but now everyone's gone. No one wants to know. Cassidy has to wrestle O'Reilly tonight. He can't believe it. He can't be here right now. And Cassidy walks off, so... Orange Cassidy... I hate this guy also Kyle O'Reilly was a goofball earlier just staring off into the distance anyway main event time goes too long right iron claw on the penis no what are we doing no like they're trying to claim that he, he's blocking the submission by putting his hands down the pants in the pockets down the pants either way he's feeling no the guy he, he up. was blocking Kyle O'Reilly locked in a sleeper hold with one hand and then he put his other hand into Orange Cassidy's pocket to prevent Orange Cassidy from blocking the submission. And what sense? What does that even make fucking sense? If if Kyle O'Reilly has got one arm wrapped around Cassidy's neck, how does Cassidy putting his hand in his pocket block the submission around his neck? It's not like Kyle O'Reilly's going for an arm bar here. He's got a fucking choke hold, a sleeper hold on. No, but the hands in the pockets doesn't mean shit. No, but it's just weird, man. Like, they were rolling about, and, like, even when they were getting up, he was still had half his forearm in his pants. Like, I'm it's not, not a good look. No, it's like, if you're flicking... I mean, I know it's LGBT month and all that shit, but come on. If you're flicking through the channels and it lands on this, it's like... What, what? I mean, imagine The Rock in Austin at Mania X7, man. And The Rock has got, you know, the, the, the people's fucking elbow rammed down Stone Cold's tights. What are we doing? Be a bit gay, would not it? No, it would be, but fucking hell, man. I don't, I don't get it. Anyway, the winner at 19 minutes and 31 seconds, Orange Cassidy. What do you make of this? Two hour show and we've got two matches pretty much going 20 minutes. It's just no good enough, man. It's, uh, the ratings and the quarters will be snookered this week. Yeah, I think, I think this final quarter is going to absolutely tank. But um, yeah, just a, just a boring match, man. Boring, boring match. 
Orange Cassidy wins, and no surprise. I mean, we all knew that was going to happen. But see, see in Prison Break, right? You had this character where <laughs> he, he had he had the uh, like his victims in prison who he raped, put their hands in his pockets because he was the the daddy, and it's just like, what what the fuck are we doing here? This just, to me, this just makes you look incredibly weak. It's actually known as a prison thing. That if you put your hand in the the pocket of another man, you belong to him. You're his bitch, and that's what Kyle O'Reilly did here. And he voluntarily did it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and he kept it in it. Uh, right, anyway, Trent Beretta comes out and attacks Cassidy, along with Kyle Fletcher. Kyle O'Reilly comes back to the ring to help Orange Cassidy, but Trent just takes out Kyle O'Reilly. So not only did Kyle O'Reilly lose, but he tried to make the save and he didn't fucking make it. But... Noella Nightingale is the one to make the save because Chris Statlander came down. She shook hands with Trent. Don't exactly know what she was going to do with Orange Cassidy, but she was picking him up while Nightingale's music plays. And she runs down, gets into the ring. While uh, Statlander jumps out the ropes there, makes her way to the back, and then Willow checks on Cassidy. And the show ends with Willow. O'Reilly and Cassidy standing tall in the ring. Kyle O'Reilly proclaimed that this Orange Cassidy jobber was an MVP, right? He's a pillar of the company. And here he is, um, getting saved by a woman, a fat woman, who because he was about to get beat up by Chris Statlander. What are we doing here? No, no, look at this show, man. The, the biggest star on the show was Dustin Rhodes. At what, 56? Whatever age he is. No one can think this is good enough, man. Well, I didn't think it was good. No, I didn't think it was good. I thought it was piss poor. Um, was it better than SmackDown? Yes. But I'm, I'm giving it a 1. <laughs> so it's better than SmackDown, but you're giving it a 1? Yeah, SmackDown got a 0, didn't it? Did it? Or right, got a 0.5? I was better. Well, actually, I'll give us a 2, then. It needs to be a wee bit higher than that. I'm sorry, I can't. I'm, I'm getting a one. It was fucking pish. One point five out of ten. Well, one, one full score higher. It just wasn't very. G- I mean, what I will say is, if you take out the opening match and the main event, it wasn't as boring as SmackDown. No. Like you said, the hour in the middle was kind of a wee bit better, but it's just salvageable. It's just not a good idea. I, I don't know why Tony Khan thinks that a twenty-minute draw to begin the show, and then a 20 minute match with two jobbers at the end of the show is the way to go. It's not been the way to go, it's never going to be the way to go. I think it's different if you've got like a, an important match, but these are two matches that were just literally fucking off the cuff. These are two matches that were just made randomly. And But no, I don't care. It's like one week you'll go, the whole, you'll go all out with the Elite Storyline, Car Crash TV, and then the next week it's just a jobber like match that ends the show. The, the ratings will... The, no, this is going to be the worst ratings I've had in ages. Guaranteed. Yeah, last week did 377. I think this week will be worse. It was really, really poor. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens, guys. But 20-minute matches isn't the way forward. One and a half out of ten. We'll catch you in the next one. Till then, peace.